Hello everyone, welcome to MYP Biology. Today our topic is going to be about the relationship between species in a community. So, let's get started. Uh, first of all, let's look at the relationship in a community. So, as a community includes all the different species living in a certain area. So, uh, living in the same habitat, different animals have to interact with each other. So, um, this is the interactions that occur between them that we call the relationship. There are different kind of relationship that we're going to look at uh, today in this lesson. So, let's find out um, what kind of relationship do animals have between each other. So, First, a relationship is going to be competition. Two or more population or species compete for the same resource in a community. It can be food or space. So competition actually helps and limits the population growth. Um, symbiosis, permanent relationship between two or more different organisms, which that at least one of them benefits from this relationship. There are three kinds of this symbiotic relationship. It's uh, parasitism, commensalism, and mutualism, which we're going to look into them. So first, commensalism, a relationship in which one species benefits and the other is neither helped nor harmed. So. An example for the common solicit, uh relationship is a shark and remora. Remora gets the protection and obtain food from the scratch of the shark's food, but the shark doesn't get any help or harm from this relationship. Parasitism. A relationship in which one organism benefits, but the other one is actually harmed, such as mosquito, um, human a relationship, or the type form and human relationship. That type form as mosquitoes get the food, um, and but humans actually uh, get a harm from this relationship. We call it parasitism. Mutualism, a relationship in which both species actually benefit. So such as insects and flowers, insects help the flowers to pollinate as well as the nectar of the flower helps the insect to be fed on. Lesions, uh, it's the um, mixture of the algae and fungi which they uh, live together. So fungi take the photosynthetic uh, food from the uh, algae and algae uh, take the um, hyphaeus from the fungi and which creates the lesions. Sea anemones and clownfish is also an uh, example for the mutualistic relationship. So uh, the clownfish actually attracts more fish to the sea anemone as well as actually um, uh, sea anemone uh, protects uh, the clownfish from the other big predators. So, now we've got an assignment, difference between predators and parasites. What kind of differences we see in predators and parasites, we're going to look into you. Uh, in a class and we're going to answer this assignment. So you've got data-based questions, red and gray squirrels. Uh, you have to solve the problem, uh, which is in your book. Red squirrels are native to Northern Europe and Northern Asia. Gray squirrels are native to North America, but they were introduced to the UK in the 19th century. For over 22 years, between 1960 and 1982, biologists recorded the presence of both species. Using the data shown in the graph, which of this relationship could have caused the changes? Predation, competition, parasitism, or mutualism. As you see in the data, the number of the great squares that over the years the red squirrel's presence decreased uh, while the gray squirrel's presence actually increased. So what caused that this changes? So we're going to find out this one. The second database questions about the Canada lynx and the snowshoe hare. So uh, the Hudson's Bay Company bought first from the trappers in northern Canada for many years and the number of furs from the snowshoe hare and its predator Canada lynx fluctuated in response to the change in the size of the two populations. So there are just um, three questions that you have to answer. The number of hairs follow a cyclical pattern of the rises and falls. How many cycles are there between 1845 and 1935? And calculate how long each cycle lasts on the average. And the links also undergoes um, 
uh, like cyclical changes in the number of similar time periods, but changes occur after those in the hair numbers, suggest an explanation for each of these changes. So now um, also there is a one assignment for you to read about the worm therapy, why parasites may be good for you. This is uh, about the BBC um, article that I, I would like you to read about the worm therapy. We're seeing that all parasites are very harmful for the human, but some parasites actually may be good for us. Uh, read the um, article that we're going to discuss in the class about this article. So thanks for watching guys, have a nice day, bye bye.